Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel where I just talk about whatever is on the top of my mind because I've apparently buried my script for my longer form content that I want to post underneath a pile of calendar pages. This is a true story. I'm additioning a calendar for my workshop. I think I've mentioned this a couple of times and I've discovered that I've put the Empress Teresa copy that I got, I printed off underneath all of them. So luckily tomorrow the, the additioning will be done and I can move on to other projects. But I'm not talking about screen printing today. I wanted to talk about atheism again, but I wanted to focus on specific Bible verse. And then I was like, well, what would be fun to do? And then I got the idea of the, um, the biblical wife or whatever. And yeah, that, that's going to take more than about an hour of research to get into. So we're going to save that for a rainy day. Tomorrow is going to be the Fortinbrost um, lore video that I've promised the Ace server. But today, I thought I would talk about something else that's been popping up on my radar recently, and that is racism. I know, hot take, a white person talking about racism. How new and unprovoked, but... I thought this would be an interesting topic because I was on Facebook and saw the old, old boomer memes about how racism is over and all of that shit. And I just, well, let's get into it. Starting with the first time I ever encountered blatant racism, but I was so young, I didn't understand what was happening. I was eight years old. And I, we had moved to Alabama from Japan and when I was seven. So I'd been there for a little bit. I was like in third or fourth grade. Can't Honestly can't remember. And I had the biggest crush on a little boy named BJ. We were best friends. Always running around together. Thick as thieves. It was BJ, me, and um, I believe his name was David. So it was the three of us and we were we were the worst honestly we didn't get in trouble with the teachers very much but we would always come up with games to play out in the during recess and we were just we were just kind of thick as thieves essentially but i had a little crush on bj a little eight-year-old crush and one day my dad sat me down and I distinctly remember this because we lived in a two-story house. I had a bedroom on the bottom floor. There was like three rooms on the bottom floor. It was my bedroom, my bathroom, and like this weird big open space that my mom used as a combo laundry room and her home office. Everything else was upstairs. It was a really cool house. I will talk about it at some point when I go over like different houses I lived in or something cool architecture or architectural fair fells like mansions maybe um but I remembered this because my dad had me sit on one of the bottom steps and he was below me and we were talking about a bad grade I had and I don't remember the segue into it I don't know if there was a segue into it but then he was like by the way you're not allowed to date boys like BJ and I was like, why? And BJ and I were friends on the bus too. So that's how my dad knew about it because I'm sure my mom told him that I would always sit with BJ and that stuff. And it was pretty obvious I had a crush. I mean, I'm eight. I don't know how to keep secrets at the time. It was one of the first times I tried to commit suicide and that ended <laughs> um, dramatically. But we won't get into that either kind of serious stuff to worry about. I, I was like, why am I not allowed to have a crush on BJ? And I was like, well, he's not like us. And the only way that they were, BJ was different from me that I could think of was the fact that he was black. And 
in fact, I do think that is what was going through my dad's head is that BJ was black and I was white. So, um, preface, my dad was born in Florida, but he grew up in a really tiny town in Georgia. So tiny that I don't think it had a light until I was well into my preteens. So, yeah, my mom was born in Huntsville, Alabama, which, yeah, it's still Alabama, but it's a little more progressive than, say, where my dad grew up. So, that was the very first time I experienced blatant racism. And it didn't come up too often because, well, BJ moved away and then we moved down further south. And the school I went to was predominantly white. It was pretty small. Um, the My high school graduation class, graduating class, was 150 or so. And there was a handful of black or Hispanic and Asian students. East Asian, not, not Middle East or anything. I don't think we had any Middle Eastern presence were in my graduating class or in school at all or Indian um but for the most part in that town the black people the black kids were from the poorer parts of town while like I don't think there was a single black person in my youth group and the, my youth group was mostly middle class and there was a couple of special cases like this boy that I dated that were obviously from lower class families that were still accepted by the church because they were the pet projects essentially. The more I think about it, I probably was a pet project too, but we, that's a different time. So I grew up not really thinking about racism because they weren't in my social circle. There weren't any black kids that were in the brass section in the marching band or really at all. There, um, the few black kids that were around didn't really talk to me because like I had my circle of friends and I could sort of warm my way into different social groups. But for the most part, I was satisfied with where I was. There was one, um, Taiwanese boy who was a couple years older than me that I had a crush on for years and it didn't hit me until recently his nickname was China Man and he was Taiwanese he was of Taiwanese descent his mother was from Taiwan his dad was either second or third generation I think removed but we called him China Man because he was one of the only East Asian people and of course for white people East Asians all look alike apparently um then I went down I started school at Auburn and again it was like my social circle what little bit that I had was almost entirely made up of white people even my cohort when I switched over to graphic design was it was all white people and the only contact I really had with any people of color was when I was checking them in to make sure that they were attending their class because they had sports scholarships like basketball players and football players well I don't think I really interacted with any of the football players but I did interact with several basketball players and about half of them were black but no one in my cohort was black um, I think when I was part of the GSA down in Auburn, there were a few POC people, but for the most part it was white, and I mostly hung around the white people. So, when I moved up to Philadelphia, it was a culture shock almost. And I don't think of myself as a racist person, because before then, before... I started moving and everything. I started getting into intersectional feminism and reading about like people of color struggles 
and trying to get understand that sort of thing, understanding cultural appropriation, all of that stuff. And it was still a culture shock to move up to Philadelphia. And when I started working, I was working with people with disabilities and most of them were black or Hispanic or just not white. So then I was dealing with a double hurdle hurdle because I was dealing with prejudices that I didn't even have and I was also trying to make sure that these prejudices that were coming up that I didn't realize I had weren't affecting my the participant I was working with because like if they got upset something bad could happen and it could risk their job and I didn't want that for them because even though I I, I like to consider myself even though I realize that I have racist preconceived notions that I'm working to dismantle, I do believe I am a good person who doesn't want to make other people struggle, essentially. I hope that makes sense. But, so it's in these that I realize that this is why I've don't believe the boomer memes that racism is over. It's not just the statistics or the fact that we have to deal with this increased issues with like disreferency between the different school systems where schools that have a predominantly black population get funded less because like the neighborhoods that the kids are coming from make less income and the schools are funded through the income tax. Because so I know all of that exists, but it's very analytical, it's there, but also just anecdotal evidence. There was a time that a homeless man came up and tried to get into my car. A couple minutes after I parked, I tend to sit in the car for a few minutes, finish decompressing from driving, look at my phone, answer a Discord message or a text, and then I'll turn the car off, get out, and go into the apartment. Well, I was doing the... I was listening to the end of a YouTube video, and this person came up, started gesturing for me to get out of the car, and then started trying to pull on the door handle to get the door open. And I just ignored it acted like I couldn't hear him, put my headphones on because I was freaking out inside, on the inside, and waited till he turned the corner to get in, and when I described the incident later to Briar, I mentioned he was black, and it's like, why, why did I say that? Why did I have to specify that this was a strange black man who was, I think he was on drugs or having some sort of episode because his mannerisms were clearly not normal, but all of that was important to the incident. What wasn't important was the color of his skin, because if it had been a white guy, I would not have said, this white guy just came and tried to open the door, but no, I said, it was a black guy, and then I had to stop later and realize, why did I have to specify it? Why is it when I end up in a auto shop full of black men, I feel a little more afraid than if I was in an auto shop full of white men. I mean, is this because I was socialized at a young age to be afraid of black men because I was raised as a girl and thus I was having to be, I was a little white girl having to be protected from the big black men? I'd never been harassed by a black man. I've very very rarely had to deal with anything of that sort because men in general just weren't attracted to me as a girl or as a woman so I this is a very strange topic to talk about a lot of people I know don't want to acknowledge the fact that they have issues to work through at least not like they don't want to acknowledge that they have racist issues to work through, I should say. Because you're not supposed to be racist. 
people know that that's wrong. Even with Trump undoing so much by actively promoting these neo-Nazis and making it more okay to be blatantly racist, we generally as a society, as millennials and Zoomers, know no, we are not supposed to be racist and it can be hard to admit when you have these biases that you didn't even realize you had until they come up and you're like, wait a second, why is that happening in my head? Or you look back on your childhood and you see that this guy you had a crush on for five years, he was kind of a shitty person, but you also gave him a really racist nickname and everybody used it. Even the band director used it. And we were all white and he was the only East Asian kid in that entire band. So, I don't think this was a particularly long video today. Well, about 16 minutes. That's normal. But I thought this was important to talk about because I'm a white person white people need to realize that we have a lot of shit to unlearn even if you don't post it openly and talk about it openly of hey there's the shit that I was taught that I didn't even realize I was taught but now I'm recognizing it and I've been working through a lot of it let me end this on a positive note I'm no longer intimidated if I end up in a black neighborhood like when I was dog grooming and I drive to a black neighborhood and every single person out on the street was black and at first I was nervous and now I'm no I was no longer intimidated just because it's very accurate of what people would say is when you are exposed to something enough it's no longer scary to you but it's not on it's not the onus of black people or people of color to teach us white people to not be afraid of them, to not be racist towards them, even unconsciously. It's our job to try and educate ourselves and work through it ourselves and give them the platform to raise their voice. And I really don't have a good way to end it because, I mean... I am a living proof that racism still exists even in the year of our lore 2021 so you can't really end this well there is no truly happy note to end it on besides we need to continue to try and change things around not just on an individual level but on a federal national international level trying to even things up so that people who have had generations of trauma have a chance to actually make something of their lives just like I have the chance to because I happen to have been born middle class and white so yeah I'm going to end this here because it's a bit of a confusing vlog today but I don't know I feel like it's important to talk about I feel like it's important for me to acknowledge that I have these issues so that other people can feel like they can acknowledge these issues even if it's just to themselves. And I'm an open book, so why not? Why not share the fact that this is something I've been trying to deal with? So, I hope y'all had a great day. Stay hydrated. I've got some water, and I've got a Minecraft build to keep going. So, I'll talk to y'all tomorrow. Bye.